Hi everybody, I'm Kelly Harrell and you're listening to What in the Weird. The Weekly Rune was published Monday. For those subscribed through Patreon, it came out Sunday ad-free. If you want to show your support for The Weekly Rune, you can search for it on Patreon and yay, it's a labor of love, so I thank you for that support. Plus, my Patreon people are just a really awesome community. If you want the simplified free version, you can subscribe to it through my website, solententarts.com. The image of the rune cast is always on my Instagram, which is Kelly Soul Arts, and it's also always in the blog posts on the website. What is the deal this week? Well, if you're a real runes fangirl, and I know you are, you're aware of the runic calendar. And that after this week is where it takes a significant detour from the traditional ordering of the Elder Futh Ark. First off, let's settle this whole THE runic calendar thing. If you really know your rune stuff, then you know there's no one runic calendar. So then why did you say that, Kelly? I know, right? It can be confusing. I've talked about the complexities surrounding runic calendars in an earlier episode, 20 or something like that at least in terms of the Sabbath injection into the calendar. The thing is, there would have been many runic calendars in ancient times, some of which have survived today because they were flexible, meaning in time, not like they were on flexible materials. Maybe they were, I don't know. But what I'm saying is, they were flexible in how they observed and tracked time. These calendars were based on minute regional details, which means they wouldn't have all recorded the runes the exact same way. What? I know. It's hard for modern linear minds to hold that. When we think of Old Norse, we think in these vague, cold, regional, way far away terms and just kind of leave it at that. The reality is there were different regional flavors of tracking time. Yes, they all had the same basic observations of the sun and the moon and time cycles, but how they ascribed the runes to those differed, largely because the way they understood time was more about cycles rather than a continual straight line. Or maybe this is just the point that you accept you're never going to understand how any of that works and agree to move on. It's up to you, and it's all good. My upcoming book, Runic Book of Days, which comes out in September, but you can order it now, pre-order it on Amazon, is about how to make sense of the runes in terms of timekeeping in a way that brings you into direct spiritual relationship, both with the runes and with season, because ultimately that's the point. It isn't whose calendar is most accurate according to what planetary trajectory. It's does it situate you into a sense of cycle and bring you into close relationships with the elements of that or those cycles. Right? Right. So say we all. The whole concept of a runic calendar works because of half months, of which there are 24, right? For each month split in half, there are 24 runes. There are 24 Elder Futhark runes. How very convenient. Half months are 14 and a quarter days. So, who figured out what rune goes with which half month? The short answer, at least in terms of the modern conversation, is Nigel Pennock, of whom I'm a huge fangirl, but I think you knew that already. So, how did he figure that out? A lot of brain-breaking research is my guess. He's written tons of books on the runes, and you should read them, everyone. Seriously, I have. He's written everything from 101 beginner coffee table books to very granular where's on Sue's in your birth chart detailed books. And yes, you really can do that, by the way. Part of my Patreon people get runic birth charts. It's seriously cool. Okay, so... Panic observed historic time cycles of the Old Norse, taking into consideration a wide range of timekeeping. Specifically, he noted that runic calendars were metonic, which means they function on a 19-year cycle, the culmination of which is the moon returns to the same spot in the sky for the same moon phase as noted by the solar year once every 19 years. What I'm saying is, look up. 
What phase is the moon in right now? What constellation is it in near above? It will be 19 years until it's exactly in that spot again. For simplicity's sake, let's say it's a new moon just above Orion. It will be 19 years until the new moon is in Orion in that exact spot again. Easy, right? Mostly it indicates just how squirrely our modern timekeeping really is. It's artificial if you hadn't felt it. Ancient rune calendars that have survived often begin their year, which has finger quotes, the new moon after winter solstice. Was this their new year or was their new year summer solstice? I'm not completely sure that that's clear or even the exact same for every regional flavor. It's perhaps not consistent at all. But this means that, and if your mind isn't already broken, it's about to be, this means the same runes wouldn't necessarily fall on the same weekdays year to year, or at least not for 19 years. Unfathomable, I know. We are total lapdogs to our sense of time in the modern context. And because of that avid obedience, Pinnock had to mesh these historic aspects of rune calendars into a functional one that we modern puppies could understand and work with. The result of that is some rune shifting. And don't even ask about the hourly tracking of runes because that's even more crazy town to try to decipher in a modern context. Because the runes occupy 14 and one quarter days, they don't all activate at the same hour. Yeah, good luck with that. In his work, Pinnock starts the runic year with summer solstice, which falls smack in the middle of the half month of Degas. We're coming up on that, if you hadn't noticed, in June. Random factoid, uh, this means conversely that winter solstice, the exact opposite of summer solstice, is always Yera. I get a particular kick out of the solstice polarity, especially because Degas and Yera are the timekeeping runes. So, and of course, keep in mind, this is all relative to the northern hemisphere. The southern hemisphere would have to reverse this whole conversation for it to work out seasonally correct for them. Pennick didn't just pull Degas and Yera out of nowhere and plop them onto the solstices and call it a runic calendar. These runes were plotted on each of their corresponding solstice in the surviving ancient runic calendars. So using those as the fixed points, the remaining 22 runes, that's right, right? 24 minus, yep. Yeah. The remaining 22 runes fill in the traditional Elder Futhark order, except for Othala. This is the problem of Othala. It all works out. There are 24 runes, 24 half months. You place Degas and Yera on their solstices, and everything's fine, except for Othala. In order for Degas to fall on summer solstice, as it has been long associated, Othala and Degas must be swapped in order. Panic didn't originate this idea, so don't go laying it all on him. In fact, the order of the Elder Futhark has long been contested. The only reason we order it as we do is because the earliest complete examples of the Elder runes place them such, which is to say later iterations of the Elder Futhark maintain mostly the same order with a few changes. One of those changes is swapping the order of Othala and Degas. So, the quote from my book that's coming out in September, Runic Book of Days, on this is, the general consensus for the calendar is Degas, and thus summer solstice, portends a drastic ending, followed by the obliteration of extremes. For this reason, it stands exactly opposite Yera in the calendar, which is, of course, for winter solstice, and marks the beginning of the sun's seasonal demise. Maybe that doesn't seem like such a big deal, though clearly you've never been on Reddit. Hardcore runesters are fierce about details like runic order 
and suggesting variations causes them sleepless angst. Personally, it does not cause me sleepless angst. I'm an utharchist at heart. Whole other story. Feel free to ask. But I bring this up because the calendar order next week is going to change. We will move from Ingwaz into Othala, which means we're getting close to summer solstice in the north. The southern hemisphere is nearing winter solstice. And for the record, those in the south would follow the Sabbath ordering of the runes and not go by the calendar dates assigned to the runes. Meaning since the south is approaching winter solstice, the rune that you're entering is Isa, not Othala, and you'll be moving into Yera, not Degas. Whole different subject. Right now, we're closing up time with Ingwaz, which has likely been really challenging. Not so much because the time with Ingwaz was difficult, but because the changes its initiation demanded of you have been hard to root into everyday life. Even if they were awesome, they were still changes that required you to show up differently or maybe require that the people around you can't show up the way you need them to. It, it could be any number of things. If you didn't catch the prior two episodes on what in the weird, do, because I go into detail about the Ingwa's initiation. It will fill in a lot of blanks. At any rate, next week, the weekly rune will detail how we segue from Ingwa's into Othala and what that means as we prep for the enormous transition of summer solstice in Degas. That's it for this episode. What are your thoughts on Futhark ordering in the runic calendar? Have you worked with the runic calendar, any runic calendar? I would love to hear your experience. Let me know by calling in through the Anchor app. You can download Anchor for Android or Apple to call in and listen, or you can email me at kelly at solentonarts.com with any questions or comments. Also, do check out earlier episodes by downloading them from Google Play or iTunes and all the other platforms, too. And if you get a chance, check out Everyday Animism, a podcast that I co-host with a couple of other lovely ladies on Anchor. You can learn more about me, Kelly Harrell, and my work by visiting soulintentarts.com. I'm Kelly, and this has been What in the Weird. Be well. <laughs>